This is the Tyler Morgan Show on Relentless Daring Media Network. Welcome back to the land of bourbon and bad decisions. This is the Tyler Morgan Show live on twitch.tv slash Tyler Morgan Show or listening on YouTube at youtube.com slash gobbledy gobbledy good find the link for youtube in the show notes if you are listening on podcast and um you want to kind of link from there or maybe just go search for tyler morgan on the old youtubes and you can find me there i am not yet on rumble still work on that because right now twitch only directly shifted over to youtube so i can't really control that but before I get into the insanity, and believe me, if you have been following the news in the last 48 hours, you know there's been some insanity that needs to be discussed. That's just all there is to it. You can go and discuss the insanity. But first, coffee. Yes, that's right, coffee. And I always talk American Pride Roasters because... They are not a paid sponsor of the show. They will occasionally throw some goodies at me when I order, but they are not paid sponsors. Nay. However, we're coming up on November. November is veteran is the home of Veterans Day on the 11th. So, one of the things that Dave has done is he has highlighted some great veterans. And these these highlighted blends of coffees, i that's what I want to talk about because he's honoring these veterans. Uh, this week, we're going to be discussing the Curtis King Blend. And if you wonder where I'm getting the information, I actually have the website pulled up on my phone. You can't read it because it's very bright and it messes with the camera. But All right, so a few months ago while da- driving on Highway 63 near Ottumwa, Iowa, Dave and his wife, spot a small historical marker sign on the side of the road. Curiosity got the best of them, and they turned around to see what it was. What they found was a single tombstone for Curtis King. Curtis King joined the Union Army at the astonishing age of 80. To put this into perspective, King was born in Virginia during the Revolutionary War. He was turned down a couple of times, but eventually was accepted into what was known as the Greybeard Regiment, comprised only of men over 45. King was the oldest by a wide margin. However, his superiors found him to be as hardy and energetic as men less than half his age. Curtis came from a strong bloodline. He he was a direct descendant of Pocahontas on his mother's side. His paternal grandfather was supposedly six and a half feet tall and lived to be 115. Records show his mother lived to the age of 103. He was illiterate, but had a terrific memory. He claimed he could recite the Bible from beginning to end. Uh, 
with only prompting from his daughter while she read along. King also fathered 21 children, and the youngest was only 15 months old at the time of his death. That's some longevity. In honor of King's service to our nation, the Curtis King is a blend of smooth, full-city roasted Ethiopian beans blended with bold, sweet, French roasted Sumatra beans. So, yeah, the fact that Dave went out of his way after discovering this uh, this tombstone to honor this man, I mean, that's a man who deserves to be honored. Uh, Kim asked if he's living in Radar's hometown. No, he's not. He was just passing through and happened to find it. But those of you who don't know who Radar is, I suggest you find the show MASH and educate yourselves. Just saying. So American Pride Roast, again, Check out their amazing blends of coffee. And I'm going to uh, put this out there. I, again, American Pride Roasters, historically great coffee. Um, tell them you heard about from the Tyler Morgan Show during the uh, special shipping instructions. That way they know you heard about it from me. But speaking of Veterans Day, I'm going to be a little busy for the next couple weeks. Well, I'll be around next week. Might be a little late, or I might not be doing a live stream, but I'll be around next week. The week after that, on the 12th, I will not be here. I will be off in Dallas doing Dallas things at the Blaze. By that, I mean I will be attending the uh, live taping of a Glenn Beck special. So, got that going. But um, if you want to do stuff to help raise money for soldiers, I have not been asked to talk about this. I'm doing this of my own accord. Because the guy putting it on is absolutely amazing. Go to youtube.com slash at the mic with Keith. And on the afternoon of November 11th, he's going to have some great guys there. That he's going to be working with to raise money for their respective charities to take care of veterans and veterans families. It's, it's that time of year where you're really seeing a lot of the, you know, the 22 a day stuff. Uh, thinking about veterans who are going through crap. And we, the greatest way you can thank a veteran is not just to walk up and say, oh, thank you for your service. Do something. Be proactive. If it's something that you can do, do it. If, it's, if there's something you cannot figure out what to do, you don't know where to start, you don't know where to go, there is nothing wrong with finding a charity. Uh, I know one of the charities that's going to be with doing this uh, live stream special with Keith on Veterans Day is Chad Robichaud from Mighty Oaks. Chad has done amazing things, you know, carrying on his service to his Marines once he retired out of the Marine Corps. I, I, I can't tell you the other, the name of the other group, but again, it's, trying to prevent veteran suicide. So that's what we need. We need more people. And like I said, if you can't do something yourself, find a good charity that will take care of these guys. And by all means, give them your money and they will put it to work for you. So yeah, check that out. I believe it's at 2 p.m. Eastern time for is when the live stream starts. Uh, again, Check that out at uh, youtube.com slash at the mic show with Keith or at the mic with Keith. And said he's go- doing great work to take care of my battles who have their own battle issues they're having to deal with back here in the state. So, again, check that out. So, yeah, youtube.com slash at the mic with Keith. All right, so before I get into what I really came here to talk about tonight, do you know the left has their own Twitter slash Facebook thing? I didn't know that. Because how many times do they tell us, well, you don't like the way we run it, they go build your own Twitter, build your own Facebook. Well, 
they were a little worried with the Truth Social, with Parlor, MeWe, Gab, Getter, all these pop-ups that are primarily right-wing centered and right-wing oriented. So they created a little site called Tribal. Let's see, hit this button here and see what happens. Ah, here we go, Tribal, yes. Now, I've gone to Tribal. I've set up an account because I learned today that this place exists. And while this place exists... And they want to be tolerant. They want to be inclusive and all this stuff. Oh, yeah. They are free of hate speech. They're free of misinformation. To the point where libs of TikTok, she went over to, to tribal. I almost called it libel because I bet you there's people that do get libeled there. That's just me saying that. I have no proof, just an opinion. Um, she went over to Tribal, and she set, set up an account, and she made one post. Men cannot get pregnant. Yes, that's right. I know. Crazy idea that men are incapable of pushing a baby out of their vaginas. It took 20 minutes for her post to get... I don't even think it was her post. I think it was her whole account got shut down for transphobia. So, I'm going to do something. I'm going to switch over here to the whole tribal so you can watch me do this live. Or if you're watching this on YouTube later, you know it's going down. Speak your mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stop it. I don't care. Oh, my gosh. Shows how awesome this is when it's brand new and it's already screwing up. No matter what time is category you select, blah, blah, blah. I don't care. Ah, uh, No. I'm having so much fun, do da, do da. Ugh. The things I try to do and it always end up biting me in the back backside. I don't get it. I do not get this. I don't even know where my... Uh. Yeah, I was going to switch over to this for a second because it's it's getting that ridiculous. But yeah, so I'm trying to get on Tribal. And it's... All yacked up here. All right. Trying to get on here. Create a new post. Boom. All right. Come here so you can see what I'm typing. Now that I have it pulled up. Doing what I want, hopefully. Sweet. Oh, since Tribal is the smarter social network, posts that have a good, insightful post description are more likely to get likes from other users. Okay, I got it. Oh, it's like kind of like Facebook. You can put like the fancy, fancy, schmancy. I want to add that to the background there. And I want to quote a movie.
Okay, then. Do, 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 do. Ah, uh, yes. Select an audience. Bum, bum, bum. Do, 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 do. Oh, my gosh. That, that'd be fun. Put there. Um, indigenous rights, police accountability. I don't even know here. So many. One. Family. So many good ones here. Humor. Oh, yeah. There we go. I'm sure that's going to really rile them up. And post. I'm not considering myself a contributor to that. Now, come back over here to the old Streamlabs feed. And now they have that up after doing some fighting. Notice up there in the top corner. I'm just going to keep an eye on that throughout the show just to see if I get anything crazy like, oh, we're taking down your stuff, man, because you don't know. Because like, I've got notifications up here. You are now friends of Travel Support. Travel keeps track of every like, comment, blah, 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 and a message probably from Travel Support. Oh, my gosh. Welcome to the Travel Family. It's so sweet. Oh, it's just so sweet here. Now... Like I said, I can come back over here to Streamlabs. I can watch. I'll see if there's a little thing pops up in the corner. Maybe we'll see something interesting. See what happens if I tell the Rainbow Jihad, boys have a penis, girls have a vagina, and baby lives matter. I'm sure nothing crazy could happen. So far, Libs of TikTok says that 20 minutes is her uh, is her record for lasting on tribal. So we'll see how this works out. All right. So I've got 14 minutes here. I'm, I'm going to save what I originally wanted to start off tonight's show with before seeing the Libs of TikTok story. I'll put it off till after the commercial break. That way I can, you know, have roughly 25 minutes to sit and rant. Oh, look, Taylor Smithson liked my post. I'm sure that's the first. Yeah, I know. I grabbed Coke. I didn't grab the whiskey. It's weird. Anyways, so getting into uh, the insanity, I said I on the 12th, I will be going to watch Glenn Beck do a special talking about the crazy government overreach. One of the people that is going to be on the show is a uh, FBI whistleblower. And uh, let's see, this is a story from yesterday at the Daily Wire. Whistleblower details how FBI allegedly broke rules, made January 6th higher priority than kitty porn. Yes, that's right. Our wonderful, beautiful, esteemed FBI taking child porn and putting it on the back burner because Granny with her Yeti cup full of wine is such a threat to democracy. More at 11. Yeah, it's... Yeah, he said he's going to be one of the people there. Oh, I, I developed a follower, Harry Mark. Yay, thank you, Harry Mark. <laughs> that sounds kind of dirty. Anywho, FBI whistleblower joined Daily Wire host Andrew Clavin Friday to reveal his frustration with the Bureau's leadership over the January 6th investigation and detail what he experienced as an agent. Which, if I get a chance to ask any questions like right away, one of the things that I will ask is... um. How is your suspension not considered a reprisal for whistleblowing? <laughs> Kim says government wants kids to be in porn. Absolutely. 
Steve Friend, who is a domestic terrorism investigator before being suspended, told the host of the Andrew Clavin show, Jack Torrance, that the FBI broke its own rules when investigating January 6th cases and arrested people without enough evidence. <laughs> Kim says Harry Mark needs to get that checked out. Yes, and I will not be doing the checking. Lindsey Graham might be willing. Possibly Paul Pelosi. We'll get into that later. Maybe they will get to the bottom of the Harry Mark situation. We'll see. Uh, he also explained how one of his superiors told him that January 6th was a higher priority than pursuing child pornography cases. Quote, when I was moved over, moved over from my child exploitation cases, the assistant special agent in charge even mentioned that he felt that child pornography was going to be a local issue and that domestic terrorism, specifically January 6th, was the higher priority, friend said. Uh, the whistleblower, the whistleblower, oh my gosh, I forgot how to talk. The whistleblower added that when he started getting involved on January 6th cases, he, he noticed that they were more or less being directed from Washington, D.C. That is a direct quote. Even though local field offices usually call most of the shots on cases, friend explained that this was inconsistent with FBI rules. So, we have a very speci- we have very specific rules when it comes to having cases open once they're open and assigned to a specific field office. And there's agents or task force officers who are running that case. It's really their responsibility to be able to carry the case forward and make all the investigative decisions. Bending the rules wasn't the only way the bureau took January 6 investigations too far, according to friend. The whistleblower I cannot speak tonight. Oh my gosh. The whistleblower. The whistleblower also said that the FBI treated nonviolent protesters unfairly. Friend told Clavin that he has arrested 150 violent criminals over the course of his career and has never used a SWAT team, but when arresting an alleged capital rider whose biggest crime was entering the building and taking a brochure. A brochure that had the. Have they been part of a sanctioned, run-of-the-mill tour of the Capitol? That brochure would have been free to have. No one would have said a word if they took it. It's just crazy. Yeah, see, the FBI used flashbangs and breached his home at 6 a.m. For taking a brochure! The FBI wonders why people like me don't trust them. Ruby Ridge. But, Waco, there's, if you're going after a non-violent criminal and you are using flashbangs, you're just being an asshole at this point. You are not doing anything other than, other than making a point to anyone else who might dare to have uh, an opinion or take nonviolent protest against the federal government, well, against a, a certain side of the government. Because, as we're seeing, it is. As long as uh, this is going on, we do have a two-tier system in America where we have, you know, the Jeffrey Epsteins who plead out to federal, federal child sex-related crimes, and he can get... He, he can get work released every day because oh, I've got to run my business, man. And he literally spent hardly any time in jail whatsoever for his original crime. 
for the one that put him on the map as being a, a, a man of ill repute, we'll say, or being a damn pedo and child trafficker. The FBI agent brought up his concerns with his colleagues but said he was resisted. They pushed back on me and said I was being a bad teammate. They said that I was being insubordinate. Even brought up the fact that, you know, that's my what's what's my future going to be at the FBI despite having my work reputation being really good, friend explained. Friend was sent home and then later suspended after meeting with the special agent in charge who told him that he, quote, represented a really fringe belief in the FBI, end quote. But that fringe belief is more common than what leaders in the Bureau are saying, Friend remarked. Agents on the ground have agreed with my sentiments that we're being overly aggressive, the whistleblower said, uh, pursuing alleged January 6 rioters. According to Friend, the gap between management and the field within the FBI is proof that massive reform is needed at the headquarters. I think the mindset there is really the problem. The rank-and-file people just want to put bad guys in jail. Unfortunately, the management, those bureaucrats that between you know, presidential appointed personnel and the guys on the ground, they have this wonderful government workers union that protects them and, and, and they can just get away with whatever they want. You know, there's a reason like the, uh, the director of a VA hospital who let his hospital just get run into the ground. Donald Trump fired him. And after filing a complaint with the union, he had his job back in a relatively short amount of time. I said, well, I'm there on the 12th. I cannot wait to see the special and how it is going to shake out. Um, uh, Kim says fire the top brass in the FBI. Uh, not just yes, but uh, hell yes. By all means, does even the uh, most senior, you know, GS level, not the not even the political appointees, the ones who you know, got got started as a GS level government service. You know, they came, they came into the FBI as a GS seven man. Cool. <laughs> Send Elon to the FBI. He will fire the higher ups. Heck yeah. Walk in with the sink. Be like, Hey FBI, let this sink in. Hey, I, I don't have a, I don't have a rim shot. No, you look like an idiot. I know. I know. I need a rim shot. But, yeah, it's absolutely insane that the FBI has that much power. And from the sounds of it, if he wanted to file a lawsuit against the FBI to be reinstated on the grounds that, um, this is a reprisal for using my legally protected whistleblower status to share wrongdoings with the media and with Congress and with whoever will listen. It's my duty as an employee of the federal government to make these transgressions known. And then he gets suspended. So, I don't know what that says about anything, but I can tell you one thing. It ain't anything good. I want to talk to you about Keto Chow. Keto Chow is a small company out of Utah that uses the absolute best ingredients to make the absolute best weight loss products available on the market. 
Their first goal is flavor. Who wants to drink something as a meal replacer that tastes like crap? Keto Chow understands that this is a hard barrier for a lot of companies to break through, so they have some of the best flavors. Cookies and cream, chocolate, vanilla, real strawberry. These are the best shakes I've ever had. I've been using them for a few months now, and they are amazing. So go to the link in the show notes, check it out. You can search for recipes on how you can use their Keto Chow products to make amazing foods that taste amazing and help with your weight loss goals. KetoChow.xyz, Keto Made Easy. Drizzly is the leading home alcohol delivery service available. Imagine being able to sit at home and pull up your smartphone and browse your favorite wine beer, spirits, and then have it delivered to your home in as little as one hour. Go to drizzly.com or check out the link in the show notes and start shopping today. Not available in all areas. Please drink responsibly. Drizzly.com. Yeah, sorry, I'm a little slow there. Um, so of all the little pop up stuff that I got going on there, I was checking out while I was on commercial break, and no, it's kind of hard to see this, but do, 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 do come over here and so switch over to the big screen and. I got notifications. Oh, Francis Rain, you come in on my post. But it appears she may have did a old bump and run to where she commented and then blocked me. And then whenever I go here and I click on her info... Ooh, content not available at this moment, which tells me one thing. Ah, yes. She blocked me because she does not believe that baby lives matter. She does not believe that boys have penises and girls have vaginas. She just wants to believe whatever it is. She believes. Now, getting into things this is where all the fun happens. I mentioned Paul Pelosi earlier in this evening. As we all know, unless you have been living under a rock, a crazy person broke into... Paul and Nancy Pelosi's home in San Francisco was shouting for Nancy, where's Nancy? Nancy, where are you at, Nancy? Paul Pelosi tried calming the burglar in. He's like, hey, I need, I, let, me, let me slip into the bathroom here and 911. Hey, can you send someone to check on me because there's a crazy person out here. He's threatening me. Oh, my God. And there was a struggle that ensued, and Paul Pelosi was beaten to within an inch of his life with a hammer. I said, I'm not here to make fun of Paul Pelosi at all. I am not here to celebrate what happened to Paul Pelosi. Because what happened to Paul Pelosi should not happen to the spouse of any elected official. I do not care how god-awful a human being that, that person in Congress is. Don't care. I don't care how evil you think they are. 
We should not be celebrating political violence. Now, and all the crazy people have been out doing what crazy people do. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah there's not enough Republicans who are out here, uh, you know, yeah, denouncing the attacks. Well, apparently, they obviously endorse it. Where's Donald Trump? He hasn't tweeted anything about it. Bruh. And some of the people who are tweeting about it, I mean, yo, know, Christine Pelosi, daughter of Paul and Nancy, keep in mind, just a few short years ago, she had a tweet taken down by Twitter because she said she fully agreed with Rand Paul's neighbor. <clears throat> Pardon me. Rand Paul's neighbor who tackled him into the side of a riding lawnmower, breaking a couple ribs, I think maybe even punctured a lug, up oh, lug, punctured a lung, and went to town pretty good on Dr. Paul. Yeah. Christine Pelosi celebrated the jackass who did it. Uh, here, within the last couple of years, you had... Uh, but the guy, he's the lieutenant governor of Wisconsin who's running against Senator Ron Johnson for that Senate seat. He tweeted out that it's an interesting hill for Steve Scalise to die on when it comes to gun, you know, gun bans and assault weapon bans when, you know, he almost died as a result of an SKS that some crazy Bernie supporter was shooting at a group of congressmen. The ridiculousness that the left has to think that they have some sort of moral authority, some sort of high ground to stand on. Oh, yeah, yeah, if you're not denouncing this, you're bad. It's like, okay, Jack Wagons, listen up. How many of y'all can I go through your public Facebook profile for your page, your Twitter, and I won't find you anything that remotely resembles gloating over violence being wrought on you know, your political foes. You, know, you have the protesters out in front of uh, Kavanaugh's house, Amy Coney Barrett's house this summer, leading up to the decision on on Dobbs. You never heard you never heard a single Democrat come out and say, "Okay, we understand we understand your anger, we understand your frustration, but you cannot be doing this to a sitting Supreme Court justice." while they're in the middle of deliberating what's going on, how they're going to rule. You can't do it. You didn't have any of that. You had Nancy Pelosi. Oh, yeah, it's your First Amendment. It is our First Amendment responsibilities. The alcohol sip was not added for effect. That was part of the actual quote. I'm 99% sure. But th this whole idea that the right is celebrating, and don't get me wrong, there are people on the right who are celebrating, who are wishing that Nancy was home. I don't associate with those whack jobs because that's what they are. They're whack jobs. They're crazy. And then you start getting into the, the conspiracy theory stuff. And this is where it gets interesting. Now, I'm sure YouTube is going to flag this as false information. I really don't care. I'm not on here for YouTube. I'm on here for me. If I get myself banned, that means I've done my job well. <laughs> 
But anywho, so you start like the big rumor that's going out now is uh, originally, oh, it's an inside job. It's staged. Well, the police really did respond to a a request for a welfare check that was asked for by Paul Pelosi. Oh, I've got another little uh, thing up there in the corner. I got a no- notification. What's going on here? Oh, 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 Alisonian democracy is coming on my post. Let's see what it says. Here's a thought. Just maybe obsessing it about children's genitalia is weird and wrong. Maybe use all that prayer type energy on helping children being happy, healthy kids. Oh, I'm going to reply. <laughs> Didn't know a movie quote was so offensive. Nor did I know. That. Enabling mental health issues that result in a 20 time higher likelihood of suicide was raising, was making happy, healthy kids. I can't type. And... Uh, we, and we'll give a smiley face because I'm so smiley. Boom. That's right. I still have the, uh, still have the other one, but this is fun. I, I, I love this. I want to look into Alistair and democracy. Uh, it looks like it's a bot. Well, of course, I probably look like a bot too because there's I have zero likes. Well, I have more likes than this nut job. And I do have a friend. I do have a follower. So I've got that. Boom. And their profile picture is out of a uh, movie scene. So apparently they're so very, very awesome. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> yeah, um, I may have hit something that went, went over to the uh, to the ending screen. I apologize. It happens. I'm trying to get my hotkeys all sorted out because a little inside baseball here. I don't have someone who can run my run the video for me. I have to do it all with this and the recording by myself. It's incredibly hard sometimes to make sure you have your hot key set up to where, you know, getting stuff that's showing up where it's supposed to. That's, you know, doing what, doing everything that's supposed to. And right now, that's weird. Yeah. Whatevs. Don't care. But it's so crazy that with everything going on that the political violence is insane. But like I said, it gets into these weird conspiracy theories. Now, until I started seeing uh started seeing the stuff from the police call from the nine one one call and 
with the uh, stuff in the 911 call, well, I'll, I'll get into that because it, it needs to be dived into just a smidge. Um, before that, the first thing I thought reading up on the attacker's background, there's a guy who's being all, you know, live in a storage unit, had a lot of issues with hard drugs. Uh, he's a Castro supporter, a nudist, and it's, there's a lot of craziness where you really can't nail down political ideology. But they start seeing where he's, um, oh, well, he was extreme right way because he even followed all these crazy conspiracies. He shared the, the, he shared the Mike Lindell video where he was a, Mike Liddell wrongly asserted the election was stolen. Well, I hate to say this, but no one has conclusively proven that the election wasn't stolen. It's hard to prove the election wasn't stolen when you have judges that continuously say, you don't have standing, you don't have standing, you don't have standing, because not having standing is not the same as we have Looked at the evidence you have presented, and we have determined there is no that it does not prove any wrongdoing occurred. So, anyways, this guy, the first thing it kind of hit to me based off of his, I said, his history, what people have said about him in the past, the fairly recent past at that. This struck me as a John Hinckley moment. Here's a man who is incredibly delusional. Dangerously delusional. And he has a very strong paranoid streak in him. And that paranoia was just fed because he would see these conspiracy theories online. And it's confirmation bias. (gasps) Oh my God. Look at, look at this. Everything I thought, it's true. It's right here on the interwebs because everything on the internet is true. George Washington said so in 1897. But, I said, that that was my initial reading because uh, those who don't remember because you're young, you know, you're one of the young crowds. You really don't know history that well. Uh, John Hinckley, attempted presidential assassin, tried to assassinate Ronald Reagan. I say tried because he failed. He he did nearly kill Ronald Reagan, but the doctor saved his life. Uh, uh, Brady, Brady, Brady. I, I can't think of his first name. But the guy who they named the Brady Bill after. He was one of the Secret Service agents who was hit in the head by one of these bullets that was being shot at uh, Ron Reagan. And he was severely, severely wounded. But, you know, so it wasn't just some crazy half-cocked thing. This was definitely an intent to kill. But John Hinckley was incredibly delusional to the point where he just knew if he did something to just to earn such crazed notoriety, Jody Foster would fall in love with him and marry him. And so that's kind of what I thought was going on here with uh, this attacker. I'm not going to say his name because he's going to get his name said enough in the news. I don't want to add to it. But the attacker... You know, asking, where's Nancy? Where's Nancy? I'm going to tie you up until Nancy gets here. Did he have it in his head that if I kill Paul, Nancy will fall in love with me because look at all the crap he's putting her through. I don't know. I can't say for sure that's what was going through his head. We would have to ask him. But, hmm, <clears> hmm. <throat> 
Sorry, allergies are going crazy right here with the weather change. Um, so that was the first thing that hit me. Is that this has got to be a John Hinckley kind of thing. And then I start hearing the reports of the 911 call and statements of the police when they arrived on scene, like... having the door opened by an unknown third party. It was the unknown third party who opened the door for the police. Why were both men in their underwear? Now, I won't play devil's advocate here. Just one second. It is possible that Paul Pelosi sleeps in just his skivvies. So he hears someone in the house at night, doesn't know who it is. Maybe he does grab a hammer, prepare to defend himself, comes down, finds another dude in his underwear. Now, I said, playing devil's advocate, it seems reasonable. It's Los Angeles, there's, or Los Angeles, it's San Francisco. My bad, I misspoke. It's San Francisco. You got a lot of crazies in San Francisco. And that's not just saying the, the hippies. Due to the previous state's attorney in San Francisco and their bail policies, they're meant there's a lot of people who should probably be in jail who are not. This is something that even London Bree, the mayor of San Francisco, yes, that's her name. It's not a porn name, although it'd be a very great porn name. London Breed. But basically through California's you know, bail system and, oh, well, we just don't want to keep all these people locked up forever with the, in the insane asylums. Meanwhile, they don't offer enough social services to make sure crazy people are getting help they need or are maintaining the help they got while institutionalized. There's so much that can be fixed and even granting the left the some of the proposals of how they would go about fixing it. The problem is they don't want to properly implement it because, oh, well, we could be spending so much more on these other social services. Who cares if a couple crazy people don't have their meds? But any hue, the, so that, that's like my thing. That's a possible theory. But then you have, like, the he broke in. Okay, if he broke in through the glass door, where was his security? Did they all have the night off? Did all of the security that you would think would follow the spouse of the Speaker of the House? Wow, I worked that rhyme in there the husband of the Speaker of the House, you would think he would have security there. So where were they? Where? Where? Where was them? Where were they? I don't know. Rumor has they had uh, they had dogs. Like, not just, like, yeah, bam, 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 dogs. Like, actual, like, guard dogs. Nothing. So as you can tell, based off of information on the 911 call that came out with both, you know, know, he called him his friend, which that could be, you know, it's kind of, hey, my friend here, he's all worked up. I need you to come check on him. And, you know, you're kind of playing it cool because you don't want to agitate a person who's in mid-delusion. Any more than you have to. Got it. But 
the, the cops show up. Unknown person opens the door again. Maybe it was a living maid, but you would think this unidentified person, if it was the living maid, would be like, oh, yeah, yeah, that, yeah, that's our living maid. As I said, there's so many questions that as much people don't want to just want to shut down the whole idea of, ah, how dare you say it was a gay affair? I don't know. He wouldn't be the first married politician to have a fling with a dude on the side, especially a hooker. If it's because I haven't confirmed it, but there are rumors that the attacker has been picked up in the past for gay prostitution. Again, I don't know if that's true. I really didn't want to say it. Like I said, so I made sure I couched it with the proper language. It's been rumored. Rumored. I don't know. I can't confirm. But I digress. This whole idea, though, that you cannot discuss it. You cannot. I've been seeing that online, too. How dare you speculate on on, on, on the motives and on, on what happened? Uh, because this is America. This is a free country. If I want to get on Twitter and I want to speculate why... Why the guy who was nominated for the head of the ATF was lying about being shot at while in a helicopter with the 50 BMG? I don't know. I'll, I'll speculate all day. But the fact of the matter is, there is um, a lot of questions. Frankly, I don't think any of them are off the table, and we should be asking them all. Because eventually, you will get you will get to the right person who has the right answer and will tell you exactly what you are looking for. All righty, that's going to wrap it up for tonight. Again, thank you so very much. For those of you who are watching live on Twitch, thank you. It means the world to me. For those of you who are listening to this on podcast and turn around and want to watch it on YouTube, you're going to be in for some hella surprises because this ugly mug is not what you are expecting to see. Kim agrees. This is an ugly mug that you don't expect to see. But it's okay. I forgive you. Anywho, if you're listening to this on podcast, on the podcast player of your choice, Four things, the four things I ask every week. Number one, please hit that subscribe button. If you're watching this on YouTube, also hit that subscribe button or it's over my face somewhere, depending on how early that last panel kicks in at the end of the video. Um, Anyway, subscribe. And also hit the bell to get those notifications on YouTube. Uh I know, some of the stuff on YouTube, it it drives me crazy every time I watch a video. Make sure you smash that subscribe button and hit hit the bell to get notifications. You can get all the notifications, you get some notifications, just hit the bell to get the notifications. I digress. So you have subscribed. After that, please go rate the podcast on your platform of choice. Uh, That... If you want to use that A word that I can't say, A, Lexa, something or other, want to use her, just be like, A, you, the the NSA spy who works for Jeff Bezos. Hey, play the Tyler Morgan show. And guess what? It'll play the Tyler Morgan show on Amazon Music. It's great. Listen, if it's on Amazon Music, guess what? You have Audible, you listen to it there. But anyways, once you have rated it, once you have reviewed, once you have rated it, with the given that five stars or that four stars, remember those three and below. We had to have a talk at Fake Tyler Morgan. My DMs are open. We can have a talk. Once you rate it, please review it. Say something nice. If you didn't particularly like the show, but you want to try to help me out and say something nice, give me kind of a nice review. Well, I'll accept it. But anyways, you better do four or five stars, period. (laughs) 
It's almost Halloween, I know. <clears throat> Pardon me. And finally, once you have rate, once you have subscribed, once you have rated, once you have reviewed, please share this episode. Check it out. Send someone else to check out. And then maybe, maybe, maybe you are looking for some bonus content. Well, if you go to patreon.com slash title mortgage show and sign up as a patron for as little as $1 a month. That's right. For as little as $1 a month. Or is it five? I really don't know anymore. I haven't been on Patreon in a while. But for the minimum amount, you will become privy to this episode. Sons commercials. Now, ACAST is putting commercials in them. Thank you, ACAST. I can use that 50 bucks whenever it finally comes in. But anyways, uh, go to Patreon.com. Subscribe. Because again, just like with going to or going to relentlessdaringshow.com slash shop and checking out the merch, whether it's going and buying built bars, buying some uh, drinks off Drizzly, buying some keto chow. Use them promo codes. That way they know you bought it from me. I get paid. I get a commission. I ain't gonna lie. That's why I do it. I do it for the commission. You know, all that money that when it comes in, it goes back into the show. I don't go and do dumb crap like buy goofy things for no reason. Whatever people do with money when they're not trying to be wise with it. I don't do dumb stuff. I try to take care of the money you send me because I want this show to still be around here in a couple of years. I want to be discovered. I want to do this at some point instead of just working till I fall apart and I'm tired as we go to bed. So again, thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much for the financial support you have put into this show. It means so much to me. And again, APR Coffee, check out the Curtis King Blend, named after a great veteran. And also on, on November the 11th, check out youtube.com slash at the mic with Keith at 2 p.m. Eastern time. And check out his live special where he's raising money for veterans charities. Again, it's that time of the year where, you know what, as a veteran, veterans causes are near and dear to my heart. So if I can, you know, shine a little light on somebody else trying to do something to help out my brothers and sisters, by all means, I'm going to do it. They don't have to pay me. They don't have to ask me. I should probably ask them if they want me to talk about it too late. Again, thank you so very much for listening. And as always, stay relentless. The Tyler Morgan Show is a relentless daring media production. The Tyler Morgan Show is supported by its listeners. To support the show, go to ko-fi.com slash Tyler Morgan Show to donate there or relentlessdaring.com and hit the donate button at the top of the page to set up your donation. All music used in the Tyler Morgan Show 